What is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We have got... Oh, I already posted a, a video on social media. We got a new computer. We got a new computer, bro. Woo! It's been a long time. Now, I, I don't want to... Uh, linger this on. Uh, let's we gonna get right into this video yes. from where we left off yes. moments ago. Right now. All right, let's get it. Uh, hold on, let's see if the, the video. Up. <laughs> yeah, because you know this, this thing is not loud. Okay, and. Without a proper diagnosis. Meanwhile, to the contrary, she has been working, acting, and recording her next album. Exactly. But she's unstable. She's nothing more than a cash cow. And if she wasn't working, the people around her weren't getting paid. Did you say cash cow? Media storm of her being 5150 twice and put under a conservatorship. All the while, she's still recovering from the lasting effects of 2007. Britney's team knew they had to do one thing to earn their paycheck: hire a PR team, flip her image entirely, and her harder than they ever had before. This process had already begun during the conservatorship. As when Britney was filming How I Met Your Mother nearly one month after being released from the psychiatric ward, it was rumored that Larry Rudolph began shopping around the reality TV series that would reportedly document Britney's comeback to the music scene. Before she could even attempt to breathe after being 5150 and thrust into a conservatorship, her team was already willing to kick her comeback into gear and broadcast every moment for the entire world to see. However, a source also began to telling outlets that Jamie was against the idea. He didn't want the world seeing everything that was going on behind the scenes. He needed that veil of secrecy. But the show was going to happen and began filming later that year. <laughs> Even though she was fighting for her freedom, in true Larry Rudolph fashion, her team was still pushing her career full speed ahead, whether she was ready or not. As we saw with the release of Blackout, Britney didn't do a proper world tour promoting the album. Even though rumors of a Blackout tour were flying as early as October of 2007, the world never saw that tour come to fruition. This was a huge loss as Britney's label and team hadn't seen the same return of investment that her other albums had had, simply because she didn't tour. This made the circus starring Britney Spears that much more important. Mm -hmm. She would need to promote two major albums across the world while going through personal struggles, legal back and forth within the court system regarding her conservatorship, all while having the media document every second of it. But Britney's team was going to make this tour happen regardless. And step one was her diet. The entertainment industry is known to be cool when it comes to a performance yeah. weight. And this isn't just the media. This can be people on the inside too. People who are meant to care about you, completely controlling your dieting until you can't think straight. For instance, Dr. Luke, a producer who is heavily involved in the production of Circus, once snapped in 2014 at a then bulimic Kesha after he saw a photo of the singer drinking a Diet Coke, saying, we all get concerned when she is breaking her diet plan. We have seen it happen multiple times almost every day. It is also double concerning when the A-list songwriters and producers are reluctant to give Kesha their songs because of her weight. Really? This was and continues to be the unfortunate reality of the music industry, and Britney Spears was no different. According to Daily Mail, Britney was back to a mere 126 pounds. Headlines would read, I'm lucky to be alive, and in the next statement say, plus her amazing diet secrets. After the stress of her custody battle saw her, quote, tip the scales to 144 pounds. Daily Mail detailed that her expensive health makeover allegedly included $6,400 a month on a nutritionist and diet supplements, $5,180 on a personal trainer, and $2,600 on a private dance choreographer. A source told Closer Magazine she limits herself to 1,400 calories a day <coughs> on a cheat day where she'll treat herself. She also changed the way she eats, trying to have only two-thirds of what is on her plate. It's all about portion control and fresh food now, and lots of water in place of Red Bull. This was hard work and wasn't put in place because she was unhealthy. Even when the media trashed her body at the 2007 VMAs, Britney was still toned. She was still more fit than was. any of the people trashing her. <coughs> this was purely for cosmetic reasons, and that is Britney's prerogative. However, as we have learned, Britney's choices are oftentimes made for her. This is evidenced even further by Britney being made the face of Bally's in May of that same year. As if that wasn't quick enough, Britney was still recording her sixth studio album. It would be in the same category as Blackout more lighthearted and pop influence. 
Keep in mind, while recording portions of this album, cameras were still following her for the reality show that was going to be released later that year. And at this point, <coughs> tensions were very high between the Spears family and Sam Buckley. As Jamie was attempting to gain more control over Britney, Sam and Jamie both signed an agreement stating that Jamie will stop pursuing a temporary restraining order against Sam as long as he agrees to stop contacting Britney. Around the same time, Britney sat down for a Take Two interview with OK Magazine. This interview is very important as we also see Jamie throw some deep, unnecessary jabs Britney's way, saying, I would hope the conservatorship stands until the end of the year, and then we'll sit back and evaluate where we are at that time, where Britney is at that time. Our relationship is new for both of us. She sometimes calls me 50 times a day and asks me things that light my life up. But like all daughters, she is very manipulative and cunning, so she gets what she wants a lot. Keep in mind, Brittany is sitting next to him while he's saying all of this. Anytime Brittany did press in 2008, she was surrounded by her father or someone her father trusted to make sure she didn't speak out of turn. We see this again in a Rolling Stone interview in September when the journalist who wrote the article included, when I met Jamie Spears backstage at the VMAs, he shakes my hand and says, take care of my baby. The or else is implied. A bear of a man with piercing blue eyes, Jamie and the conservatorship lawyers make it difficult to talk in depth to his baby. And interviewing Brittany was a rigorously micromanaged process. We were never left alone together, and my questions had to be submitted ahead of time for approval. Acceptable topics included her new album, Her Boys, and that's about it. Her team said she wouldn't answer anything about the past year and vetoed a question as straightforward as, do you have an opinion on the presidential election? This seemed to be the ground rules for every interview that she did around this time, as the same questions were asked in the OK Magazine article about her kids, her family life, and her album. In the OK interview, Britney said that her album was coming in six to nine months. However, just the next month, she was already recording a music video for the first single off the album, Womanizer. And the music video was released even quicker than that, coming out a little bit over a week since being recorded. Womanizer quickly became one of Britney's most successful songs to date, and she jumped right back in front of the camera to record the circus music video. Around this time, it was announced that Britney Spears would be premiering her highly anticipated reality show as a music documentary on MTV. This documentary nice. would release in conjunction with her new album Circus and would feature behind the scenes footage of Womanizer, some of the recording of Circus and the accompanying okay. video, as well as different rehearsals and Britney's day to day life. And while it was interesting to see Britney in her element working as hard as possible, mm -hmm. the majority of people tuned in to hear Britney comments of her personal life, as that's yeah. all the media had been talking about for nearly three years. Just it yeah. is now the state of her conservatorship something she had refrained from in the circus press tour. And they were treated to the only raw clips in existence of Britney speaking candidly about her conservatorship. For the record began by setting the premise that on the eve of the 2008 MTV Music Awards, Britney Spears invited a film crew into her life. The film you're about to see was captured over the 60 days that followed. No topic was off limits and no question went unanswered. Mm -hmm. For the first time mm -hmm. in nearly a year, Britney had the floor. She began by saying that there is a lot don't know about her and she, she feels her misrepresented. Truth. Then it jumps right into her hectic lifestyle preparing for the VMA. Britney's team begins discussing the way they keep people in and out of her life. Jamie telling Larry Rudolph that security will be stationed at the door and Larry responds saying no one gets through the door without speaking to one of us. We can't have a revolving door. They instruct her that when she accepts her VMA awards, someone will knock on the door, presumably of her private dressing room, and guide her onto the stage. They had it set up so that no one could speak to her. The control of Britney exhibited throughout this documentary is intense, and anytime Jamie enters a room, Britney tenses up and is a completely different person. And anytime he leaves, she relaxes she and is her normal lovely self. She expands on her lifestyle saying, I hope he doesn't abuse her like physically. Feel free, get to my car and go to the people make me feel like I can stay in my home. Some people in my life that aren't, you know, just bad people. Mm -hmm. Like I was very guarded at first, but then I went to a point where I ended up letting them in because I was lonely. <laughs> the notion that she didn't care about the business side of her conservatorship. In the last couple of years, things that have happened, not that they even the business, things that just happened to me personally have been the problem. It was all about her personal life and children. At this point, Brittany was alone. She explained how heartbreaking the entire situation was with Kevin. With Kevin, I, because I had two 
two children with them, I did not know what to do with myself. Built my dream home in Malibu, a huge house and a, a pool and a huge yard for the kids and I did everything for them and just my world for them. Everything was for them. This house was last Great mother. perfect. Mm -hmm. Family and birthing lives are great. But now that house was just a lonely reminder of the childhood that was quickly disappearing. Taking from her. Because like my babies represented home. That was my home with them. And every time I went home, it was like, oh God, I can't be here. Then Brittany gets into how the people around her are taking advantage of her. I'm definitely angry with myself for letting people take advantage of me. <laughs> Got the goofy side in there. Yeah, that mm -hmm. previously trashed Britney in every way possible. But she shot him with a crossbow in the opening sequence, signifying huh. the rise from the top. So that's who that was supposed to be. Britney's team is pushing her on the biggest tour 
first she'd ever done. Needless to say, Brittany Whitney took to her soap box, which is something she's previously said she really enjoys doing. Even under Larry and her father's watchful eye, this time she still had no phone usage. However, allegedly one day while rehearsing, Brittany snuck off to make one of the most important phone calls of her life. this voicemail for attorney John Eardley, the same attorney who tried to help her move her case to the federal level the year prior. When the judge denied his motion and kept it to state level, he said that Eardley had not yet tried to challenge the probate court's appointment of Samuel Ingham. So Eardley was going to do just that. He contacted attorney John Anderson for his expertise, and together they would attempt to help Brittany. On January 27, 2009, attorney Anderson sent a letter to Jamie Spears' attorney with an ex parte petition that he was planning to file with the court on the 29th. They were petitioning for Brittany to finally be able to retain and pay for her own attorney and to relieve Samuel Ingham, the court yeah, the guy, yeah. Since Brittany was so controlled and unable to make phone calls, Sam Lutby would help Brittany by being the middleman. He would somehow <coughs> sneak the petition paperwork over to Brittany for her to sign and then get the paperwork back to the attorney. Jamie's attorneys would then speak with attorney Anderson. They informed him Brittany lacked the capacity to retain counsel and that Eardley had tried to remove the case before but was denied for that reason. Anderson then decided not to file the petition to help Brittany and would have no further involvement in the matter. Three days later, Jamie Spears filed for a restraining order against Adnan, Brittany's ex-boyfriend, Sam Lutby, and attorney John Eardley. When Sam was acting as the middleman between Brittany and the attorneys, he broke the agreement he made with Jamie back in July of 2008, stating he would cease contact with Brittany. Jamie said upon reviewing phone records, Brittany had spoken with both Adnan and Sam that month. Attorney John Eardley was included via his connection with Sam Lutby and his attempts at trying to assist Brittany. The restraining order was granted temporarily with hearings to follow. At this point, Jamie had successfully obtained restraining orders on the last few people who had spent a year actively trying to get Brittany out of the immensely controlling situation she was in. Allie Sims, Brittany's cousin and previous assistant, spoke up as she hadn't heard from Brittany since the conservatorship started. Allie said, you know they're very controlling, and that's fine. And I just stepped back. I'm not going to fight nine lawyers and parents. Sam Murphy now decided to take legal action against Jamie and Lynn Spears. Jamie Spears had assaulted Sam by sneaking into Brittany's house, bypassing her gate and guard, then proceeded to punch Sam in the chest back in January of 2008. This man's aggressive. He's very aggressive. Mainly citing her 2008 <coughs> declaration and her book, Through the Storm, where Lynn had accused Sam of drugging Brittany and not giving her access to phones or cars. But he wouldn't just sue Brittany's parents. He would also sue Brittany for breach of contract, airing out her personal life from her breaking point in 2007. He was one of the last few people trying to help Brittany get out from under her estranged father's <laughs> thumb. But now he was seeking compensation for the time he was her manager. Although they hadn't met yet, he alleged when Brittany infamously shaved her head, it was to avoid drug testing. And that when he agreed to become her manager, he brought drug sniffing dogs to her house, flushing a powdery white substance. He also stated he helped with the paparazzi so they would stop putting her in dangerous situations. If the paparazzi adhered to their rules, he would text them their location so they could get the pictures they needed. You know, it'd be kind of cool if you guys were able to talk to her. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, not to say, able to talk. 27-year-old. Can't really speak. Well, I'm blind. Have a cell phone. Can't see her friends. A little odd, don't you think? 27-year-old touring the whole world. No? Well, you know, she's making money for everybody. She's making money for everyone but herself, maybe. She's not really concerned with money, you know? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Exactly, that's true. That's a damn shame.
Oh, go crazy now. She was calling um, that she was, you know, sick of this conservatorship and that her dad was controlling and she wants out and she just really wants Sam to find her a new lawyer, that she can't even have her own cell phone without them overhearing me or controlling everything. I relayed the message to my brother um, to see if he could help her out. He said he'll see what she could, um, he could do, excuse me. Um, and uh, we talked one more time and she asked if I could get her a phone. And she told me she'd be at the Peninsula Hotel um, around 9 o'clock. When I gave her the phone, she's really like happy and relieved, but also just pretty scared, you know, that the fact that I have to slip her a phone, you know, um, and her mom can't see her, you know, she, she was scared. So she had to go hide it so no one would see. Blair Burke, an attorney for Jamie Spears, testified under oath saying Britney said she didn't know who Eardley was and did not want him as her attorney. Now, this testimony from Britney's father's attorney makes zero sense, considering the phone transcript obtained by OK Magazine from 2008, where Britney is contacting Eardley for help, and the leaked 2009 voicemail where she said her father was threatening her. However, the restraining orders were granted for three years. Friedman, mm -hmm. Sam's attorney, said in regards to Britney Spears being deemed too incompetent to testify, the conservatorship was misusing a statute meant for the elderly or severely disabled adults to protect a singer who is currently on an international concert tour. Mm -hmm. One major reason Britney's parents said they needed the conservatorship was to protect Britney from Sam Lutfi and his control. But the conservatorship had now become the very thing they were trying to protect her from. While attorneys were arguing back in Los Angeles if Britney was incompetent or not, she was embarking on a new relationship with her agent Jason Trawick and her first live tour in five years. The circus tour would not only be her highest grossing tour bringing in 131 million dollars but it would be a four-leg international tour with more shows than she had ever done before. Hey. It's the name. Britney Spears mm -hmm. has made her come back one hundred percent. She has. She this. rocked the house. She is we back. Like, if anybody what? thought Britney would come back, Britney's back. <laughs> Just the effects and like the dancers and the colors and everything was amazing. The costumes. Yeah. She brought back all of her old music too for like fans that have known her ever since we've grown up. It was completely amazing. Blew her mind. She all changes. She has like other stuff going on. I love how you hear the excitement. Oh my goodness. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Going to the concert. It's amazing. After Britney's comeback tour ended, she had a two hour closed door hearing in regards to her conservatorship for an annual progress report. After two long years fighting her conservatorship, nearly 100 shows touring and promoting the circus, and promoting her single three, along with her greatest hits album, Britney's team gave her no breaks. In a meeting, on the next time oh we're gonna stop this Dragon part Boys. right here because you know my phone is the, the memory is going crazy and all that i'm excited i'm still excited that we got a new computer Me um too. but this is insane is and i love how deep dive put everything together mm -hmm. and explained everything in distinctive detail this is magnifique now my my thing is just hearing the stuff that she's going through and how many people are trying to make it in their mission 
for her to not tell it is like that's crazy. Yeah, that that's how the insane. hell can she be so successful and out of all people get the messed up ones? Like mm -hmm. I don't understand that. And I feel so bad. Like I feel like if if there was something we could do to kind of like get her out of that, I would definitely want to help her. I think she's almost out of it. Uh, we have to. Keep you have it. to keep on watching to yeah. see. And then also we can also look into it on our own time. All see. right. We'll see you guys on the next part, the last part. Pew. Dun dun dun. Pew. Really. Pew pew pew.